Hello, good morning. Welcome to our channel Yushi Talks. And today we are going to talk about yet another execution. It's that of uh, Corey Johnson for seven murders that he did in 1992. We are going to bring in important details in regards to, you know, what were his last words or what he wanted to eat the last time. Hence, please watch the complete video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it so far. So let's get going. The Trump administration executed Corey Johnson on Thursday for a series of seven murders in 1992. He was the 12th federal inmate to, you know, to be put to death under President Trump. Mr. Johnson committed the murders in Richmond area to further, uh, to further a drug enterprise that trafficked large quantities of cocaine. Among his crimes were the shooting with a semi-automatic weapon of a, revel, a rival drug dealer, the killing of a woman who had not paid for some crack cocaine, and the shooting of a man at close range whom Mr. Johnson suspected of cooperating with the police. Mr. Johnson, 52, was pronounced death by, dead by legal injection at 11.34 p.m. at the Federal Cor Correctional Complex in Terre Haute, Indiana, the Bureau of Prisons said. When asked by the executioner if they had any last words, Mr. Johnson responded, No, I'm okay, according to a report from a journalist in attendance. Several seconds later, he said softly, Love you, gazing at a room designated for members of his family. In a statement released by a spokesperson for his defense team, Mr. Johnson apologized to the families that were victimized by his actions and listed the names of seven murder victims, requesting that they be remembered. On the streets, I was looking for shortcuts. I had some good role models, but I was side-tracking. I was blind and stupid. He said, I am not the same man that I was. Mr. Johnson thanked the chaplain, his minister, his legal team and the staff in the special confinement unit. He noted that the pizza and the strawberry shake were wonderful, but that he never received the jelly-filled donuts that he ordered, a reference to his final meal request. What's with that? He added, they should be fixed. Mr. Johnson had tested positive for the coronavirus last month, shortly after the government scheduled his execution during an outbreak on federal death row at the prison in Terre Haute. At least 22 of the men housed on the death row were tested positive, lawyers for the prisoners and others with knowledge of the cases said. Madeline Cohen, who represents two of the men, says she knew of 33 cases. In a request to delay Mr. Johnson's execution, his lawyer said that the virus had caused significant lung damage. They argued his execution would violate the Eighth Amendment's, uh, Amendment's prohibition on cruel and unusual punishment because he could experience the sensation of su suffocating or drowning if put to death with the federal government's method, which uses a single drug, pentobarbital. Instead, his lawyer suggested Mr. Johnson should be executed by firing squad or by the Bureau of Prisons could administrator a pain-relieving anesthetic drug before the in injection of pentorbital. Specifically, Mr. Johnson's lawyer argued that the combination of the coronavirus and government's lethal injection protocol would place him especially at risk of experiencing flash pulmonary edema while still sensate. Flash pulmonary edema, a condition in which fluid rapidly accumulates in the lungs, has been at the center of some challenges to the federal government's execution protocol. The courts have been largely unreceptive to those claims. But briefly, it seems as if coronavirus would provide Mr. Johnson a reprieve. A judge on the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia suspended Mr. Johnson's execution and another execution scheduled for Friday until at least March. Shortly after, a panel of judges on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit overturned that order. Joined with another judge on the panel, Judge Gregory G. Katzas of Appeals Court cited Supreme Court precedent that states that uh, the Eighth Amendment does not guarantee a prisoner a painless death, something that of course isn't guaranteed to many people. In a filing with the Supreme Court, the government contrasted its lethal injection protocol with death by hanging, claiming that hanging could cause suffocation that lasts several minutes, even if coronavirus infection would make the prisoner's execution more painful. The government argued that the brief duration of pain, most likely measured in seconds or at most two minutes, would be far less than that of inmates executed by hanging. Mr. Johnson is a convicted serial killer who murdered and maimed multiple people on different occasions and whose victims included innocent bystanders, the government said in a separate filing with the Supreme Court. The families have waited decades for the sentence to be enforced and are currently in Terre Haute for the execution. A majority of the Supreme Court sided with this execution and hence the execution and they, hence they went with the execution ahead. So that's all we have in news today in regards to the execution of Corey Johnson for seven murders in 1992. Please keep watching this space for more details and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it. Thank you for watching and you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.